Last year, my brother and I toured Western Montana in the cold and the rain. This year, we're headed to Utah to experience the sunshine and the Red Rocks. But first, we have to get there. Hello, beautiful people. If you're new here, my name is Amanda Zitto, and this is my brother, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> we are in the middle of Eastern Oregon, and we are on our way to Southern Utah. I will be riding the 2022 Honda Africa Twin Adventure Sports DCT that Honda has kindly let me borrow for the rest of my adventures of 2023 and brother. And I will be riding my 2011 V-Strom 650 it's very special. <laughs> <laughs> a huge thank you to Revzilla for sponsoring this series and making it possible. Revzilla is the number one online resource for motorcycle gear, parts, and accessories, and we will have all of our kit listed down in the description for you to check out. We have a couple of new pieces of gear for this trip. We upgraded a little bit. Number one, I have a new hat. I got it at the Portland Outdoor Store downtown. I'm very proud of it. And to go along with my new hat, I've come up with a solution for taking the hat on motorcycle trips. I have made myself a custom hat containment unit. Hat <laughs> containment unit. <laughs> that was an apt description, actually. Thank you. <laughs> I'm pretty proud of it. And especially after last year's mishap of losing it to the wind, it is honked down. I have like a safety clip on the back. We went down the gorge yesterday at like 75 miles per hour with the gorge winds and it did not go anywhere. So I'm going to call that field tested and approved. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the more relevant upgrades is that I talked to Honda and they gave me permission to put engine guards and saddlebag racks on the twin and I'm very excited about it. So I reached out to SW Motec and they've helped me put engine guards, saddlebag racks, and the luggage rack on the twin and my life is complete now. I have had the I like I get to ride the bike that I've always dreamed of owning. I have my dialed in luggage system on my dream bike. I'm just like in heaven right now. My hat didn't fly away. Your hat didn't fly away. <laughs> You can pack all the things. I can pack all the things. <laughs> I don't have to carry any of it. It's magical. <laughs> also new for this trip is my brand new Scorpion XO AT960 with a topographic print. The new 960 is the updated version of the AT950 modular helmet I've been wearing for the last few years. It's still modular. The vent system is updated. The front of the helmet also comes to a narrower point now, which makes it feel a little bit more aerodynamic. And the button for the drop down sun visor has been moved to the chin bar. It also is now compatible with Scorpion's Exocom system, which I love. For those who are gonna ask me, it is still pretty much just as noisy as the old 950, maybe a little bit quieter. To be honest though, I didn't notice a huge difference because I wear earplugs. <laughs> I think uh, bro brother got some upgrades for this trip. I did. Yes. I got a new sleeping pad from Xped, yes. which is awesome. It's much wider than the old one, so there's no rolling off each side. You're gonna t are you gonna tell them about your sleeping bag? Oh yes, and the amazing sleeping bag, which is probably the best part because it it's wearable and you can put your arms through it, which is the best part. Oh, and the feet, like it's open at the bottom. And I'm a very tall person, so I have a problem with sleeping bags. I also don't like being tucked in. Yeah. So being able to stick my feet at the bottom is awesome. It's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we should probably get packed up and get headed on down the road. We're headed through southern Idaho today on our way to Utah. Eventually, we'll get there. Eventually. Yep. <laughs> Let's hit the road.
<laughs> just the echoes of a, a generator and a rickety horse trailer in the background. No big deal. Well, brother, uh, welcome to the overflow camping of Bruno Dune State Park. We paid $24 for a piece of dirt. <laughs> but I'm less angry about it because there's water. And the pit toilet isn't that bad. <laughs> isn't that bad. Isn't that bad. And you know, we have a penny table. Editing Amanda popping in to let you know that we had to fix this picnic table because the bolt for the supports was missing when we sat down. But we, we fixed it. It's going to be hot in the morning because there's no shade. <laughs> yeah. You could be waking up early. Yeah. We'll make sunrise. <laughs> we'll make sunrise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, we're going to set up camp and probably make dinner in the dark again. For dinner, we tried out those beef bolognese from Right on Trek, which are actually made in Montana. No crazy preservatives and salt was one of the last ingredients, so I was very impressed. Five out of five, would definitely eat again. Utah experienced a record-breaking winter. And when Gary and I got there, they were also experiencing a heat wave. As a result, a lot of areas in Utah were experiencing high water levels and a little bit of flooding. I thought that I had prepared by having eight backup campsites along this canyon outside of Logan, and unfortunately, a ton were closed to flooding and others were butted right up against the high water level and we did not feel comfortable sleeping there. We were even foiled by one of my higher elevation options because the snow level stopped us before we even made it to the campground. As a result of all of these things, Gary and I decided to ride to Garden City and stay at the Bear Lake KOA. It wasn't perfect, but it was a place to stay for the night.
goodbye, KOA of Bear Lake. You, uh, you were quiet and you did the job, but you're still not my favorite. That's a $60 patch of, of grass there. And an open canal. And an open canal. Apparently it's very dangerous. It's a very dangerous canal. <laughs> no showers, no trash. And our, our camp spot was level. There was, you know, it's better than that $60 piece of dirt in Texas. Right. There was grass. <laughs> there was grass. <laughs> yep, we're, we're gonna leave now. We crossed into Utah and we went through a beautiful canyon. It was gorgeous. And all of the campsites that I had planned for backup, which was like, there was like eight campgrounds along that canyon and half of them were flooded and closed. And the other half were feet away from the river yeah. because the water level was so high. So we kind of ended up spending a lot of money at a KOA in Bear Lake. It was okay. Might as well really have stayed in in a random campground. Yeah. Although the only campground that we found that was habitable. It was so loud. It was very loud next to the road. Well, I think all of them would have been loud. All of them Because they were all loud. right next to the highway. Yeah, they were all right next to the highway and the river was moving so fast, the river was super loud. Yeah. So it's like, it's either like camp, like feet away from a river that may or may not rise in the middle of the night. Yeah, that was my other concern. <laughs> Or uh, like with the highway noise and the river noise or $60 KOA, essentially next to somebody's house. Yeah, I know there was literally a house up on the hill. Yeah. Uh, but that happened. It's done now. Yeah. We got to watch the cowboys hustle cows across the road. But we had a very, like a pretty like chill travel day. Yeah. And we stopped at the cemetery and had our little break. Cemeteries are the best kind of parks, I think, <laughs> you know? They're kind of nice. Yeah, they're not super busy. I think that there should be way more picnic tables in cemeteries than there are. We made it to Wellington, Utah, and our next stop is going to be Moab. We're going to explore Canyonlands. I'm very excited. Uh, slight tangent, but uh, the hotel that I booked here in Wellington for us is the National Nine. And turns out this is the hotel that I camped at back in 2016 after I went to Moto's in Moab. And it looks like this hotel has kind of embraced the fact that people need a place to camp. So there's like a full on RV park uh, next to the hotel now. So that's pretty funny. You probably started that. I probably did. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, hey, you know, that's a good idea. We should probably get packed up and get going. Here we go. <laughs> Thanks to Revzilla for sponsoring this series and making it possible. Revzilla is the number one online retailer for motorcycle riding gear, parts, and accessories, including this kryptonite keeper disc lock I keep on the Africa Twin at night so I know she's safe. Check the description below for our full list of kit available on Revzilla that we took to Utah with us.
In order to get to the Needles District of Canyon Lance National Park, you have to navigate through a beautiful stretch of Highway 211, also known as Indian Creek Corridor Scenic Byway, which runs through a patchwork of BLM, private, and Utah State Trust lands. There's actually a few points of interest along this route before you even get to the boundary of the park, including Newspaper Rock, a collection of petroglyphs over 2,000 years old. But the scenery alone is well worth the drive. We stayed at Needles Outpost, a privately owned campground inside the park boundary we found and booked with Hip Camp. It was the perfect launching point to explore Needles and the other formations along the route in and out of this area. We picked a site that bud right up against a rock formation in the middle of the campground, set up camp, and Gary proceeded to find himself a cave. brother. <laughs> well, we managed to arrive at camp and check in when we were supposed to before five. However, that also meant we got to enjoy the rest of the, the last of the heat of the day. We could not bring ourselves to set up our tents in that heat. So I made a sh makeshift shade shelter and napped and brother sat in a chair in the, and behind the tree that had shade. And there's this beautiful big rock that dominates this campground. Um, we're at Needles Outpost, just outside of Canyonlands National Park. And I am pleasantly surprised so far. It's a very nice campground. There's showers. And a bathroom. And a bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and the temperature started getting nice around 645. So we set up tents and started making dinner. And I know it doesn't look like it right now, but we're eating and it's not dark. It is not dark. I think it's technically the blue hour now. It is the blue hour now, yes. I'm very proud of us. We're having uh, mushrooms, green beans, and pesto pasta for dinner. It's very good. It is very good. I'm proud. <laughs> <laughs> and tomorrow, brother, we're going to go explore needles. Yay. I'm excited. <laughs> Hopefully it's not too hot. Right. <laughs> it got dark. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to clean up dishes and go to bed. We'll see you guys in the morning.
make that handle? No. Is, that, cool is that really the handle that comes with mm -hmm. it? It looks so flimsy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That works. Please, sir, may I have some water? Well, good morning, beautiful people from Needles Outpost outside of Canyonlands National Park. Brother picked an excellent spot for us because our campsite is still in the shade and some other people's have already seen the sun. And it's a little bit after eight o'clock now and our tents are still in the shade. Thank you, brother. You're welcome. <laughs> As the helicopter flies over. It actually rained last night. I had to hustle out of my tent at midnight to go pick up my camera. <laughs> But it's also made the air nice and cool this morning. Yes. Which is a nice reprieve from the heat that we experienced when we got here yesterday. Today we're gonna go check out Needles Visitor Center, maybe do a couple of the short hikes, and see where the day takes us. It's kind of nice to have a home base. We're here for two nights, and not having to worry about packing up the tents this morning is kind of nice. Yes. It's a little luxurious. <laughs> My brain was like, we need to plan more rest days. And then the other part of my brain was like, and then we can't get as far. <laughs> <laughs> Canyonlands National Park is carved into three districts. Island in the Sky, the Maze, and the Needles. It is over 300,000 acres, which means it could swallow the city of Chicago. The Maze District is the most difficult and desolate part of the park to visit, requiring a high clearance vehicle and is more like a multi-day expedition. Island in the Sky is the most visited district of the park and the most friendly for a drive-by visit. But we chose to explore the Needles District, tucked away 70 miles south of Moab. The Needle's key feature is a network of hiking and backpacking trails. Cave Spring Trail is a short loop hike less than a mile round trip. It leads to a historic cowboy camp established in the late 1800s. Ranching in Canyon Country required cowboys to live in isolated camps like this. This camp was established here because Cave Spring, a little further down the trail, was a reliable water source. Rainwater percolating through the layers of porous sandstone forms these seeps. Handprints and paint figures on the wall remind us that the ancestors of Native Americans occupied these canyons six millennia before the cattlemen arrived, about 6,000 to 700 years ago.
Well, brother, we have made it back to camp right as blue hour is setting. I call that a win. Yes. <laughs> we didn't know if we were going to make it back to camp before the sun set, and it was dark, dark, but we managed it. It was a nice, long, it was a long day, but it was a good day. It was a good day. Yes. After we finished our hike in Candylands, we headed back to Moab and had dinner at a wonderful little Italian restaurant. It was good food. Very good. And I was zonked afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... Needles Outpost is like 70 miles from Moab, so we still had like a good hour and a half drive back to camp. <laughs> but it was worth it. It was good. Totally worth it. It was totally worth it. I got a new hat band. We got good food. Yes. Yes. And now I'm going to go to bed. Well, good morning, beautiful people. If you're new here, my name is Amanda Zitto and this is my brother, Gary. <laughs> We're currently camped at Needles Outpost outside of Canyonlands National Park. We're leaving today, unfortunately, although it's been very pleasant being like camped in one spot for two nights. Yes, that was a good idea. Yeah. Today, however, we're going to take on the Bicentennial Highway. Natural Bridges Monument is along that highway and I'm just stoked. We have packed up the bikes and I'm just finishing off my breakfast and then we'll hit the road. I'm kind of sad to be leaving. Right. <laughs> it's a very nice campground. It's a very nice campground. It's a beautiful area. It's definitely tucked away. I have no idea where we're staying tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it's a surprise. It's a surprise. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, campsite. You were good. Let's go! Laundry time. I never knew I would be so excited to see a card slot on a laundry machine before. <laughs> After getting some chores done, we made it to the beginning of the Bicentennial Highway, or Utah Route 95, which stretches across the high red desert. Between Hanksville and Blanding, there are no rest stops, no commercial facilities, no place to buy gas or to pick up food or stop for repairs. This is a pack it in and pack it out situation, <laughs> but it's beautiful. we decided to make a small detour to Natural Bridges National Monument. The monument is home to three large natural bridges, pictographs, and narrow canyons. The bridges were formed by a seasonal stream that runs through White Canyon and its tributary Armstrong Canyon. 
The bridges can be seen from overlooks along a nine mile paved loop road called Bridge View Drive. Natural Bridges was the first national monument in Utah established in 1908. And in 2007, it became the first international dark sky park in the world. Hanksville is the ultimate launching off point to a lot of other attractions in this area of Utah. We stayed the night at Duke's RV Park in their cabins that felt like luxury with their running water and private bathrooms. Okay, first, there's USB ports, which means it has passed my first test. However, there's candy. This might be my new favorite place. <laughs> The Duke's Grill is in the same lot, so it's easy to park the bike for the night and walk to dinner and breakfast the next morning. Well, brother, I would say that we found some nice digs here in Hanksville, Utah. Definitely nicer than I was expecting. Right? This is pretty <laughs> awesome. It's really nice. We had tried to find a couple of spots to camp, but between the rain clouds on the horizon and absolutely no place that had cover out of the wind that wasn't a sand pit. I still think that we did pretty darn well for ourselves. Heck yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy with our decision. Yes. It's very comfortable. It's very nice. A cabin that has its own plumbing is very impressive. <laughs> not something you see very often, at least not in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> right. Very nice cabin too. Yeah. And the restaurant is literally within walking distance, so we will probably be eating there for breakfast too. Probably. Most likely. <laughs> <laughs> anyway i hope that you guys enjoyed the views today we know we did we stopped umpteen million times and uh now we're gonna go to bed it was a long day it was a good day it was a long day okay good night <laughs>Well, good morning, beautiful people from Hanksville, Utah and Duke's RV park in our little cabin. That was very nice. The towels were fluffy and uh, we're packing up. First things first, breakfast. And I think we're gonna go and check out Goblin Valley today. So I'm excited about that. <laughs> Are you excited about Goblin Valley? Yes. <laughs> Hanksville was a very pleasant surprise to us. In case you're going to be in this area, Hanksville also has two gas stations, a grocery store, 
a motel, and Carl's Critter Garden, which we very much enjoyed. Donations help support Carl's family, and the sculptures features positive messages. It's a wonderful spot to stop and take a break. Goblin Valley State Park features formations called goblins, which are layers of sandstone exposed by erosion. In the late 1920s, Arthur Chaffin, owner of the Height Ferry, and two companions were searching for an alternative route between Green River and Caneville. They came to a vantage point about a mile west of Goblin Valley and were awed by what they saw. Five buttes and a valley of strange shaped rock formations, surrounded by a wall of eroded cliffs. In 1949, Chaffin returned to the area he called Mushroom Valley. He spent several days exploring Mysterious Valley and photographing its scores of intricately eroded creatures. The area was acquired by the state of Utah and in 1964 was officially designated a state park. Swing Arm City is an OHV area near Caneville, Utah, which is a mecca for most off-road enthusiasts, featuring a stunning view of Factory Butte. Amanda and I didn't go through the process of getting our Utah OHV stickers, so we just appreciated the view. As of 2023, Utah requires an OHV education certificate before you may purchase an OHV sticker. The education course and stickers can be accessed online. We'll leave resources in the description. From Factory Butte, it was a short drive to the little campground of Sleepy Hollow in Caneville, where we set up camp for the night. Yep. Mushroom risotto from yeah. Moto Camp Nerd. Thank you, my friend, because uh, there's a lot of bucks. There's some bucks. And we wanted something quick and easy so we didn't have to spend all the time in the bugs. Yes. Yes. That would be preferable. Yes. <laughs> it's happening. What is on your phone? <laughs> I think a bird pooped on my phone. It did. There's a bird right there. A bird, a bird just pooped, pooped on, on his phone. phone. I know, that's why I'm glad I sealed that back up now. I was thinking the bugs, but apparently I'm going to watch out for the bird poop. I can't believe that! 
He's like, you know what I think of your phone? <laughs> here, here. Here you go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we sh show the camera. I gave him wipes. Good. Yes. Fantastic. Good. Yeah. <laughs> We're calling um, this aggressive bug attack uh, practice for Alaska. Yes. 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 A reminder of all the things that we still need to do. <laughs> All the preparation. All the prep. You know, I make a point to not pick campsites next to lakes. Bodies of water. Yeah. Because of the bugs. Uh -huh. Did I think about the fact this was next to a river at all? Apparently not. No, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> we had a good day. It was a good day. It was a good day. Well, good morning, beautiful people. If you're new here, my name is Amanda Zitto and this is my brother, Gary. <laughs> we're currently at this lovely little Sleepy Hollow campground in Caneville, Utah. And today we're headed to Capitol Reef National yeah. Park. I'm very excited. And now I'm gonna eat my breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> The name Capitol Reef refers to the nearly 100 mile long water pocket fold that defines the landscape and the park. The first paved road to cross the reef wasn't built until 1962. While our campsite in Caneville would be a great kickoff point to visit the remote north section of Capitol Reef, known as Cathedral Valley, Gary and I had our sights set on doing the Burr Trail switchbacks, so we set off to the visitor center to check with a ranger about the road conditions. We had the misfortune of experiencing part of Capitol Reef during Memorial Day weekend. We knew it was going to be bad, but knowing it's going to be bad is always different than living it. So when we got our info from the busy visitor center, I had a bit of a rough time with the crowd of people. Once we got the all clear from the rangers that the Burr Trail was clear, we hurried off to the less busy south section of the park. at the start of the Burr Trail switchbacks. How are you feeling, brother? <laughs> it was a sandy road to get here. We're hoping that the switchbacks are more rock than sand. Fingers crossed. But we're feeling good. It's been a good day. Here we go. The Burr Trail was originally just a section of switchbacks in Burr Canyon that cattlemen in the late 19th century used to move cattle between winter and summer ranges. Today, the entire road from Bullfrog to Boulder is referred to as the Burr Trail.
When we got to the top of the switchbacks, we ran into a very nice gentleman going the opposite direction and he recognized me. So I gave him a sticker and he honored me by putting it on his bike right then and there. We got a place of honor. I feel very special. Yeah. <laughs> you should. Yeah. yeah. Do the thing. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate you. Doing the same thing. Hey, you're one of the people that got me said, hey, if she can do it by herself, I can do it right? by myself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the best. I'm telling you, you were. You were one of the, so I could go do this. This is fun. Well, it was wonderful to meet you in person. Yeah, it was fun. Run, you know, run across you on Bird Trail. Yeah. <laughs> Which is not disappointing, by the way. No, it's been gorgeous. And uh, going down here is the best case. Highway 12 between Boulder and Escalante is also known as the Hogback. The Hogback is known for being one of the most scenic and wild drives in the United States. It's 100 feet wide with an 800 foot drop on either side. The Hogback is named for its location on a ridge with steep canyons on both sides. trying to find a campground on the way here and failing and trying to find a pullout and failing. Uh, we called every single hotel slash inn in Escalante and finally found this little gem of a place, the Cowboy Country Inn, and they had one room left. Um, unfortunately, it's only a single bed, so we had to rock, paper, scissors for who's going to sleep on the couch. <laughs> that will be me. <laughs> but I feel very lucky that we got a room at all. And it was very reasonably priced. They easily could have jacked it up because it's Memorial Day weekend and they did not. So they're my new favorite people. Anyway, we're going to get unpacked and then we're going to head back to Boulder because we have reservations for Hell's Backbone Grill. And I'm very excited because it's supposed to be really good food and we've had this reservation for over a month. <laughs> so the hype is real.
Boulder, Utah is home to Hell's Backbone Grill and Farm. I didn't even know this place existed until I tried to visit this place in 2021 with Ride to Food, but unfortunately they were closed. This time I made reservations a month before our arrival to make certain Gary and I would get an opportunity to eat here. The Hell's Backbone Grill and Farm uses organic, locally produced, regionally and seasonally appropriate food. They grow most of their produce themselves on their six acre farm. Their fruit is sourced largely from Boulder's heirloom orchards and their meat comes from local ranchers. I had the braised beef and Gary had the enchiladas. The food was incredible. This whole experience was well worth the hefty price tag for some incredible farm to table food. Oh, look at that, this came apart. The ride back to Escalante in the dark, definitely worth it. Well, good morning, beautiful people from the Cowboy Country Inn. We had a wonderful little stay here. Bikes are packed up. Brothers have an arrest over there. This is gonna be one of our last days in Utah before we really have to start hauling butt home because brother has to get back to work and I have other stuff that I need to really get done back at my home. So I think today is just gonna be like a solid, slow rest day. On my rough schedule I had for us that we were just gonna end up in Penguich tonight, which is less than 70 miles away. We're just gonna have a chill day. We're gonna go find a place to eat so I can dump SD cards and just have a chill day. How many times can you say chill day in one sentence? A lot. Chill, chill day. It has no meaning now. <laughs> headed back down Highway 12 to Cova Coffee for breakfast and seemingly every other person in this area for Memorial Day weekend also had the same idea and I transferred some files for a couple hours on the laptop before we headed on down the road. Well, brother and I have made it to Penguich, Utah. We found ourselves a little motel. It was very cheap, it was like 77 bucks here at the, the Bryceway Inn. And it's no frills, but it'll do. And tomorrow we start the long trek home. We might have one more night in Utah, but we will be homeward bound. Well, good morning, beautiful people from Penguich, Utah. If you're new here, my name is Amanda Zitto and this is my brother, Gary. We are at the tail end of our adventures in Utah. We are actually 
headed back today. It's the official turnaround day, and we have a long haul to home. His brother has to go back to work, and I have other things that I have to take care of, so it's official. It's coming to an end. Bikes are packed up. Let's hit the road. Yay! We took a small break at the site of Butch Cassidy's boyhood home. In 1879, when Robert Leroy Parker, also known as Butch Cassidy, moved to this homestead with his family, there was already a two-room cabin on the property. But as the family grew, Maxie added a kitchen on the east side and two bedrooms on the south side, expanding the house to its current size. Butch started finding excuses not to go to church at a young age. He then began to rub shoulders with outlaws like Mike Cassidy when he was working at Jim Marshall's ranch located 12 miles south of Circleville. Mike took Butch under his wing and taught him about handling horses and guns. When Butch turned 18, he decided he didn't want to scrap out a living in Circleville and wanted to go somewhere to get hard, solid gold. He would leave the homestead in 1884. He sent money home often for the first few years and is considered one of the most well-liked and respected outlaws of the Old West. No wonder they were outlaws. <laughs> Grew up something like this with nothing to do and nowhere to... Room. We wrapped up our time at the homestead and headed north. Stopping at roadside attractions on a trip just adds a bit of charm to a stretch of road you expected to be a long slog. It's the unexpected chance encounters like this that transform a simple road trip or a travel day into shared moments and stories. Also, just look at this. It's so cool. We had our sights set to ride Nebo Loop Scenic Byway, a 38 mile stretch of picturesque mountain terrain with wildflowers and winding roads. And when we came around a bend and spot the mountains, I was just too excited not to make a quick stop to capture the mountains. Don't get me wrong, Southeast Utah has been absolutely beautiful, but y'all know I'm a mountain lady at heart and seeing the mountains again just made me real happy. <laughs> Not more than a quarter mile from where we stopped, we ran into a closed gate, blocking our way forward. As soon as I said that it was awesome to see the mountains, uh, we witnessed that the road was closed because there's a giant hole in the road. So we will not be finishing the scenic byway, unfortunately. <laughs> However, we did find this lovely little campground I think this is going to be a good little spot and actually it's quite early in the afternoon so we might be able to like set up, eat food, and start to go to bed before the sun goes down. Yes. I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> I'm pretty excited about it. Well, welcome to home for the night. Yay! <laughs> Well, we're having pesto pasta again for dinner because evidently we live on pesto pasta. Yes, all of the pesto. 
it's just easy to make and also it's really nice to be with someone else for a change so I can just get a regular old jar of pesto and know that we can eat the whole thing. So really I'm just indulging myself. <laughs> but we're gonna eat dinner and then we'll see you guys in the morning. Bye. Well, good morning, beautiful people from my lovely little campsite. And I just wanted to... <laughs> um, brother was having a little trouble boiling water this morning because it is quite chillier up here because we're at a much higher elevation. And I don't know if I've told you guys this before, but if it's really, really cold and your stove is having struggle, but you can tell that there's still fuel in your canister, if you flip the stove upside down because the fuel kind of becomes more of a liquid than a gas when it's really cold, if you flip it upside down so that it feeds into your stove, especially, well, it really only works if you have a remote canister stove. So the stove is here, there's a hose that feeds to your fuel so that you can flip your fuel upside down. But if you do have one of those and it's cold and your stove's struggling, try doing that. <laughs> Brother didn't boil enough water for my tea and my oatmeal and his coffee, and I'm offended. <laughs> I only have so much water. <laughs> the water was right here. <laughs> One of the small downsides of everybody getting out for Memorial Day weekend and getting to enjoy the outdoors, which is a good thing, is that not everybody quite understands the concept of leave no trace and that your fire pit is not a trash can. Aluminum and plastic does not burn. Please pack out your trash. Um, when we rolled up yesterday, it was very obvious that a family had been here all weekend and had been throwing all of their trash into. Before we leave today, I'm going to pack it all up into a bag and take it out with us because I don't want somebody else to come in and uh, have to deal with all this trash, so. Pack out your trash, pretty please. If there's no trash provided at the campground, please pack out your trash. Carry a trash bag. Have a plan to deal with your own trash. All the good things. Right, brother? Right. <laughs> This series is brought to you by Revzilla, the ultimate source for all things motorcycle gear, parts, and accessories. Visit Revzilla.com for expert advice, an unbeatable selection, and gear that's as adventurous as you are. Gary and I were actually twinning a bit on this trip. We both love the Forma Terra Evo Gore-Tex boots and the Revit Sand 3 gloves. I've also had the Revit Sand 4 H2O women's jacket and pants for a full year now, and I've worn them in all kinds of weather, and it's still my favorite suit. The Scorpion XO 18960 is the updated version of the AT950 I've been wearing for a few years. The vent system is updated and the front of the helmet comes to a narrower point so it feels like it deflects the wind a little bit better than its old counterpart. Although the visor is still a wind sail on the freeway, but not any worse than the old 950 in my opinion. The button for the drop down sunshade has been moved to the chin bar which I think makes it a little easier to use. The 960 also is now compatible with Scorpion's XO Comm system, which gets rid of a lot of extra bulk on the side of the helmet. Check the links in the description for our full gear list and elevate your riding experience for the next riding season with Revzilla. Goodbye campsite, you are beautiful. We've got the trash, we're gonna go find a spot to throw that away and we'll get on down the road.
just like that, it's the day after Memorial Day and we have this whole BLM campground to ourselves. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy what difference a day makes. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> it's stir fry for dinner. Yeah. It's shaking bacon. I help. <laughs> hey brother, now I want shake and bake. <laughs> Why would you do that to me? <laughs> <laughs> with everything packed up, we left camp with the intentions of following this dirt road north through this lovely recreation area. again. Well, good morning, beautiful people. We thought we were going to have a gorgeous little ride up this lake today, and we've been foiled again. Another road closed. Poop. Well, I guess we're going back. I guess so. <laughs> Despite all the roadblocks on this trip, we did our best to pivot and work with what we had. Between flood campsites, crowds, or closed roads, we made the best of the situation we were handed. Sure, it doesn't always work out the way you thought it would, but that shouldn't keep you from trying to have a good time. Besides, how boring would it be if you came back from a trip and had to tell your family everything went totally to plan? The best stories are made up of ups and downs. The town of Soda Springs is named for the hundreds of natural springs of carbonated water that are located in and around the city. The springs were known to Native Americans and were a landmark along the Oregon Trail. Today the city is also known as a location of the Soda Springs Geyser, which was unleashed in 1937. The town was looking for hot water for a hot pool bathing attraction. They drilled into a chamber of highly pressurized gas and cold water, and the geyser was released. After it ran for weeks and flooded the downtown area, it was capped and manually released upon request as a tourist attraction. The geyser currently runs on a time release valve which opens every hour.
we made the last stretch to our family's ranch in the rain. <laughs> Life rarely goes according to plan, but that shouldn't hinder our pursuit of joy. Embracing the unexpected turns and challenges, it adds depth to our experiences. If you take anything from these videos, I hope that you take the time and opportunity you have and you make the most out of them. Get out and do the thing. Night one on the sister and brother adventure to Utah. We're in Eastern Oregon and uh, brother, I think we found the bugs. Thank <laughs> you. 